Hi, welcome back to making custom themes uh, in GeForce Aeon or Whitecap. All right, we last left off, we made a our custom one theme with our color map custom category set. What we're gonna do now is make this way more interesting so that instead of custom one, it has our own custom name which is what we want. So to do that, however, we can't use GeForce. We're going to go into the operating system on Windows. Um, uh, it still, all still applies, but you just have to look in the appropriate locations. So let's take a quick look. Um, I'm going to quit GeForce because we don't want to be editing files while GeForce or other visuals open or else it won't show up. Now keep in mind when you quit, that's when these files will show up. If you have not quit, the visual yet after you've created them those files won't be there so it might be a head scratcher so here we go on the left hand side I've got the engine folder on the right hand side I've got the user preferences folder let's look at the engine folder first um, you can see all the themes in the engine folder are here oh lo and behold each one of these are had the little padlock there here's all the themes remember we saw the infernal theme it had the padlock it's because that's in the engine folder and can't be changed um, and if you actually look at one of these text files, you can see, oh, okay, so for Infernal, you can see the color maps, categories it specifies, the flow field it specifies, and that's just uh, a fancy way of encoding that, and it's plus or minus. But that's just the text version of what you're editing in the visual. And you can see um, the color map categories that ship with it. You can also see the other things there. We by uh, Infernal is also there again the name is just it can be anything but they just happen to have the same names you can see so for a category all those configs those color maps are in this thing called Infernal so that's the engine folder if we flip over to the user or the preferences folder on Windows it's the user folder and then inside of that which is invisible make sure you invisible uh, you have to go inside of that you'll find roaming and then you'll find sound spectrum and then you'll find uh, uh, GeForce in this case. On Mac, you can see it here. We're in li uh, library preferences. Uh, so here we are in the GeForce folder. You can see the um, custom color map category we made and the custom theme. So let's take a quick look. Let's look at the category first. Uh, remember, we, we, added, we added those um, color maps, you can see them there. You don't have to go in there. But we do want to change though is the category title. This is how it shows up in G4. So let's call that, um, uh, um, let's call it uh, uh, top four. Uh, we'll, we'll just call this uh, Drew's, Drew's favorite, Drew's faves, we'll call it that. And uh, we'll save the changes, close it. And let's add the file name to, it can, it, it, it doesn't have to change, but let's just do it so that we don't go crazy trying to figure out which is what, and we're just gonna call this um, uh, Drew's Faves right there. And again, the name can be anything, the, the file name can be anything. Now we look in the themes folder and we find the custom one and Two things here we're interested in. We're looking at the theme name, which we know we wanted to ch change it. Um, we call the color maps Drew's faves. Well, now let's call uh, let's call our theme name. Let's call it um, Drew's theme. And notice the color map before the it's used the custom color map category before. And we just renamed that, so now it's uh, top four. Let's just um, let's just leave that out, and so it will um, we'll edit it in the actual visual. So let's save the changes. Alternatively, we could actually type in um, Drew's favorites there, and it would still work. But I want to show you that. So let's let's close that, reopen the visual, go into the theme editor here. Let me chill out the visuals here for a second. Go in the theme editor. Um, we can see that uh, Drew's theme appeared because we edited the name in the file. We go in there and uh, we'll have custom there. We, we didn't add the name, so that it's still going to have custom there. But we renamed the color map category. So if we go back really quick, go into color maps, categories, we can see that um, 
Drew's favorites is there, and if we go in there, we can see the the four there, and we can we can edit that and add more if we wanted to. So so let's say we add 105 degrees, uh, quit it, go back and check Drew's favorites. We can see 105 degrees just got added there. All right. So now let's go back. Notice that I quit GeForce before I went looking at the file, or else I wouldn't see the change. And meanwhile, also in the GeForce toolbar, notice that we can change the theme there too. So look at that theme there, and then we can change that to um, our own in a second. Let's get back to that. Um, and I'm realizing the GeForce toolbars needs to be restarted there. And we can see Drew's theme is available in the theme. So let's go back to this here. Um, so sure enough, there's Drew's theme in there, and bam. So and at this point, we've now added the name there, and both the categories. And bam. So there's 105 degrees still there. Now if we go back, let's say we go back to our theme editor, and um, we, let's say the whole point of this is we want to make a second theme. So let's make a second theme and let's call it, um, we call it custom, so it's going to call it custom one, let's, that's fine because we, it does it with a blank space for there. And let's say we want to do it with, um, I like the infernals and the voltage selection already is pretty good there. And I like kind of say the minimal one and um, let's say I like the fractal ones there, um, and let's say I like the subtle sprites, and I'm just going to use all the, um, um, they're all par subtle particles, and then let's say all the sprites, and let's just do that, and then we've got, remember it's still called custom one. So now let's let's uh, quit GeForce. You can see you made a new file there. Um, now, so we don't go crazy there. Notice it's um, kept the uh, we didn't change the file name last time. So and you can see that uh, here's the original one, Drew's theme. So let's just rename it so we don't go crazy. We'll call it uh, Drew's theme here. And then the new one that we made, um, let's call it. Uh, um, Banjo Cat. Oops. Okay, cool. And then we close that. And then let's go. And again, these names don't have to match. It's just the file name is different. Just for our own sanity there. And there we go. So now we restart GeForce. Let's restart the toolbar. So you can see Banjo Cat in there is Drew's themes in there. So now if we go into, you know, uh, Banjo Cat and we do that and we can see all the active color maps and recall that we had added Voltage and Infernal. So if we go back to the theme editor and we look at Banjo Cat, see Infernal and Voltage and that's what we see. All right, last but not least, we will, let's say we like these themes, they're so great, we want them to be read only so we don't accidentally edit them. Let's quit GeForce, quit the toolbar. Now let's say, um, oops, yeah, I even made a typo there. Uh, let's say, let's say I really like Drew's theme. I'm gonna put Drew's theme in the engine themes folder. And I'm gonna put, um, oops, and I'm gonna put um, Drew's favorites in the um, I could put, I'll say I put that in the, uh, engine color map categories folder. So now we restart the visual. Nothing has changed because those, the, the engine folder and the user folder are just combined. So sure enough, now when we go into, 
the theme editor, we'll see that Drew's theme uh, is now there. And I don't know why there's a lock there. There should be a lock. What's going on? Uh, so this is a good question. Why, why is it still editable or not? It's because um, if I go in the given folder, one of the um, uh, flags should be um, whether it's, oh yeah, see. So if we look at, say, Infernal and Drew's favorites, the difference is, is that <laughs> there's a flag, this one category flags equals one means it makes it read only. So so the, the categories and themes that Sound Spectrum ships has that read only set. So it doesn't matter where the item is, it's just that that's the, way it's set. So when you make a new custom theme, it's set to be editable by default. So we could do, um, so you could either, we could, so here we're on Drew's favorites. I'll move, I'll move this color map back, bam, like that with that thing set. We go into color maps um, and categories and we can see that Drew's favorites is now locked. That's great. That covers it. So the important thing here is that this lets you select a given theme from the toolbar. So that now, or let's see, let's go to uh, uh, Drew's theme. And if I recall right, we had those five color maps in there. Why is that not working? I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I missed something. Themes, theme editor, uh, Drew's theme. Oh, I guess like maybe this got, oh, it's because maybe we changed the name. I don't know, either or. Let's add Drew's favorites in there. So where are we at? We've made Drew's theme and we select Drew's theme here. We go into color maps and we can see that uh, the Drew's favorites or Drew's faves color map categories is referenced, right? So those are the ones that show up, right? And if we were to um, we'll do one more experiment here. We go back to uh, the theme editor and let's say we um, go into Drew's theme and let's say we take out, uh, we subtract all the infernal and uh, the bright background. So we just have Drew's favorites minus the infernal. Um, so what do we get for color maps? We get the Drew's favorites minus, because remember there was five, but remember the infernal ones have a bunch of the red ones. Drew's favorites had um, uh, these five, and I think these top two were in the infernal. So we're, the, the three that we're getting in active color maps are, are a composite set of all the categories we've enabled, minus all the ones we've disabled. And last but not least, and when we look in any one of these config categories, when we look at uh, all, is basically all the configs that are on that machine. Like black, for example, it's in parentheses, doesn't show up in any of them by default, but it's still a config that's selectable. We can see there. Um, and there's some that are like that. And suggested are the ones that are the kind of the Sound Spectrum recommended ones, and then here's all the ones we ship with. As we saw in the engine folder, you can find all those, and the read-only thing is set by the flag. Be aware that on something like Windows, if your engine folder is in the program files, you know, and you say your theme is editable with that flag is zero, and you try and make a change, it may not be able to save the changes because of the OS permissions. Just be aware of stuff like that, and remember, always be aware to quit the visualizer when you um, uh, before you edit any files or else it can get out of sync. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you've gotten some out of it. If you've gotten this far, you are truly a Sound Spectrum warrior and customer. Thank you so much for supporting our software and being patient through all this stuff. As you probably know, there is just not a lot of resources here. We're in a place where um, it's hard to sell desktop software now. There's a lot of noise in mobile software and desktop. It's hard for um, artistic quality software like ours to get out there, you know, when there's just so much other stuff out there. And on top of that, both Windows and Apple um, 
uh, make a moving target for their desktop and mobile stuff. Um, and that's really hard to keep up with, with our, with our resources. And we would love to keep up with all the app signing stuff and the, va the virus scanning uh, stuff we have to deal with on false positives for our software because software scanning stuff thinks we're a virus because it look happens to look like it. You know, there's a lot of security settings and compatibility stuff we have to figure out and work through on the engineering side. You know, and meanwhile, Apple and Microsoft, they're focused on other stuff. They're not really super intent on making the desktop experience that's, you know, compatible. They're focused on getting their kinds of stuff in there. And the Apple today is very different from the Apple that was around from 10 years ago when I was starting out. You know, the Apple today um, hasn't really moved quickly on a lot of the iTunes bugs we have filed. I think we have five radars, that's what Apple calls their bug reports, filed for iTunes that relate to problems in iTunes. And they've been sitting there for months and months and months. And in, in the meantime, all you know, all y'all Sound Spectrum customers have had to deal with that crap and it sucks and I, and I feel for it and it's hard to know what to do with that. You know, meanwhile, we've released Tuner, which has been an awesome success and is a great piece of software, but unfortunately it's only an iOS. Making a cross-platform audio player takes a lot of resources and Tuner is a pretty great piece of software, but to take it to the next level of being cross-platform is just uh, a lot of work. Um, but that's something we've, we've wanted. So it's a, it's a tough landscape right now. And it's only getting noisier and harder for people like us to support ourselves. I've been shifting to a new project in the background called Plan. It's a community organization and logistics planning tool for communities that have low or no resources. Well, what's that mean? Well, think of communities like a VFW, an off-the-grid farming community, a, um, a neighborhood, uh, uh, art collective, maybe a, um, a youth club, or a workout center, a running group, a Boy Scout troop, uh, a camping group. These are all groups that kind of informally want to meet together, but in the past have required a bunch of software to do there. We're making software that's very visual and very visually integrated into something new and interesting. And I want to invite all the people that have followed Sound Spectrum and the software that there's something new coming and it's not going to be pure visual art, but it's something that's very community oriented, something that I'm personally very passionate about and something that is interesting to me and, and how I want to contribute. Thank you for supporting Sound Spectrum Software. It matters a lot to me personally. If you'd like to learn more about Plan, go to plan.tools, the domain in any web browser, plan.tools, and you can see some stuff there. Thanks again for tuning in.